Welcome to Camaraderie, a show where everything's made up and the points don't matter. Today's episode is sponsored by this microphone that I've been using for the last uh, couple couple videos, few videos now. Um, yeah, I just it needs a pop filter, so I just put the packaging around it. I need a stand. I I'm I'm what you call a professional. <laughs> Today's subject is whether or not to shoot in color or black and white. When it comes down to it, that's one of the, maybe the first thing, especially when shooting with film, that's like the first thing that you have to decide as a photographer. That's after making the decision to pour your life savings into a camera system and commit to an unforgiving craft with an increasingly oversaturated playing field. But um, yeah, after you get your camera, that's, uh, you gotta figure out if you're gonna shoot with black and white or color. Now, yes, with digital, you can kind of do both. You can shoot color and then alter it after the fact. Um, but I find it a lot more beneficial to um, intentionally shoot black and white rather than just hoping that the shot turns out after applying a filter to it to make it black and white, you know, desaturation, whatever. And choosing to shoot in black and white can be done in one of two ways. You can either adjust your camera settings or get some black and white film. And from here on out, I'll be referencing things mostly in terms of black and white film because that's well, what I shoot most of my stuff with. So, color or black and white. For me, 95% of the time, it's black and white. Now, I could and probably will wax poetic about the inherently abstract nature of black and white photography, but for me, when I was first starting out, it was all about uh, price and convenience. Now, for the most part, a black and white roll of film is going to be a little bit cheaper than a roll of color film. The thing that I love about it is that you can also, a lot of black and white films you can get in bulk rolls of 100 feet. Um, and then, you know, just kind of make your own, roll your own stuff. I've covered that before on this channel. What that does is that brings your price per shot down even lower. So you can really kind of just squeeze, you can get a lot of, a lot more bang for your buck when it comes to black and white. And then I started to develop my own film and scan my own film. And I found that, I found that black and white is a lot more forgiving than color film is. It gives me a little bit more freedom whenever I just want to try out something or experiment with different techniques or anything like that. You know, I feel less bad about wasting a shot of black and white film than I do with color. Color just feels a little bit more precious to me. So black and white photography has a specific look and uh, you might be able to guess what that is. It's uh, that's black and white. Eh, well, there's also at least 50 shades of gray in the middle there, but you get my point. Now, as members of the human race, we don't see in monochrome, unless you have a particularly severe case of achromatopsia, achromatopsia, achromatopsia. Achromatopsia. Since we see in color, black and white photography is not exactly intuitive. So we have to learn how to see in black and white. We have to think and perceive and anticipate a world stripped of color. Eh, this is easier said than done because as I just established like two seconds ago, our little primate eyeballs love to see in color. Whether you're shooting black and white or color film, when you look through that viewfinder, you're still seeing a bunch of colors. I know that there are monochromatic models of digital cameras out there, but you still see in color when you don't have the camera up to your face. Like you still, like you, it's, we don't see in black and white. I, I, that's the point I hope that I've gotten across by now. Before we get to understanding what it means to see in black and white, I think a brief history lesson is in order here. Like why is black and white photography even a thing? Like why didn't we just have color? Like people have been painting with color, people didn't start painting with black and white. Basically, we have black and white photography because of technical limitations of the time. I don't wanna to get too into the weeds of how we got photography. Um, so to keep it short, you know, we basically found out that 
silver is light sensitive and the quickest, easiest, most practical way forward was just experimenting with silver until like photography became a thing. That's, that's really, that is, I'm missing a lot of stuff there, but that's basically, we found out, hey, silver is light sensitive. Now this was all happening in the middle of the 1800s and it wasn't until the 1930s with the release of the Kodachrome system that we had a mass market friendly way of shooting in color. So that's about 80 to 90 years of photographic history that just was dominated by black and white images. This time period is when photography was getting its feet under itself. And this is when it grew from a niche scientific endeavor into something resembling an art form, as well as just a way for people to simply capture their experience, capture what they saw around them. Wait, if we got mass-produced color film in the 1930s, then why was all of the media from back then black and white? Well, first of all, it wasn't, so jot that down. Now, there were several movies and photos shot in color, or otherwise processed to include color, but the methods of producing and reproducing color were still in their infancy and were quite expensive in terms of either labor or capital. Therefore, few copies of these images and movies made their way to the public and even fewer survive to this day. Speaking of color film being expensive in terms of both labor and capital, the first half of the 20th century was when photojournalism became a thing. Where do you suppose photojournalists had their work published? That's right, newspapers and magazines. So imagine you're a beat reporter for the New York Times or a human interest photographer employed by the federal government. Just off the top of my head, you know, a couple, couple little ways that you could be being a photojournalist. So you got deadlines to meet and there's a news story every day. And if you're gonna shoot color, you're gonna have to wait at least five to seven days to get your shots back because there's no one hour photoshops those they're not a thing yet um, and then by the time that you do get your photos back the story is very likely to be old news and even if they were still relevant you wouldn't be able to show them off in your newspapers and magazines because uh, publications generally run on very very tight margins and it's a lot more cost effective to simply print with one ink just with black ink than it is to run the whole full color image. But with black and white photography, the chemicals are so readily available and the process is so nailed down that you can just run back home or to your publication's office or in a pinch your hotel's bathroom and get your darkroom work done there and have your images ready for the printers before the morning press. Okay, so black and white photography makes sense for news. But why would an artistic photographer want to work with black and white when colors available? Colors are really pretty. Well, first of all, yes, colors are indeed very pleasing to the eye. How I see it though is that mm, photography was and is still the new kid on the block in terms of artistic creative expression. I mean, think about it. Our species had been painting for about 50, 40 to 50,000 years by the time photography came along. Painting as a means of communication and as a form of art had a lot more time to develop and mature and grow nuanced. And photography is at best 170 years old. To put that in perspective, as of the time of this recording, I'm 29 years old and I'm grossly oversimplifying things on a lot of levels here, but if humanity's first painting was made the second that I was born, roughly 10,000, 10 and a half thousand days ago, uh, photography wasn't invented until less than 48 hours ago, and color didn't come around until yesterday. And so after the medium crossed over from science experiment to artistic expression, photography like I mentioned before, was it had to find its legs. And photographers fleshed out the vocabulary and the artistic possibilities of their chosen medium of expression with the tools most easily available, which was more often than not black and white film. But Luke, color photography is super accessible now. 
Um, it's even like the default. Like, I get it. Black and white was a thing, but it doesn't have to. We have color. I, and especially in the digital realm, it's like way cheaper to shoot digital color than it is to shoot black and white. Like, I mean, you don't have to worry about wasting images or anything like that. Why? Why do I need it? I can just. You can just convert it. You can just desaturate a man saturation slider. Just cut it down. Why do I need to shoot black and white? Well, I mean, you can do a lot worse than learning from the old masters of this craft. Ansel Adams, Henri Cartier-Bresson, Diane Arbus, Dorothea Lange, Elliot Erwitt, Stieglitz, Steichen, Ing Morath, Vivian Meyer. The list could go on, but all of these people made their names by working with black and white film and yeah there's a lot of good stuff in there black and white photography teaches you to pay attention to form and shape and texture and contrast and geometry for the first year or so that i started shooting film like back when i started this channel i used color film because that's all there was i was living in greensboro at the time and the closest thing to a camera shop that we had was Walgreens and obviously they only had like three packs of you know Kodak Ultramax or Superior 400. At the time I shot pretty much anything and everything I could point my viewfinder at. I, I simply enjoyed the act of creating and it was a lot of fun. After I started this channel I began to take photography a little bit more seriously because I was spending so much time and money on it. Eventually I moved to a city that had an actual camera shop. I picked up some black and white film and the rest is history. History that's still being written because truth be told, I'm pretty much making it all up as I go along. So I got some black and white film. Uh, I think it was a roll of HP5 and maybe some T-Max. I had no idea what I was doing, but I immediately tried to think in black and white, or at least that's what I um, told myself. After getting my scans and prints back, I realized that what I pictured in my head was a long way off from what the final image looked like. And part of that was not realizing how different colors are rendered when it's grayscale. Colors, they, they gotta look like something when they're put in black and white, and I, I had no idea what to expect. Uh, another part of it was thinking, hey, this looks cool. I bet it'll look even better in black and white. That's uh, That was not the case for, for a lot of pictures. And yet, even with those initial frustrations, the photos that worked really worked, and I was hooked. When color was no longer a factor, I began to see the world around me differently. Shooting in black and white transported me to a new realm of perception. I stopped looking for complementary colors in a scene and started looking for high contrast situations. I stopped worrying about how faithfully my film stock would render any given color and started looking for texture. I started seeking out shapes and geometry. I had to make my subject my subject instead of just relying on color. Of course, as with any good pendulum swing, I uh, went to the extreme and shot exclusively black and white for a while, just zero color. I was like, yes, black and white is life, but life uh, finds a way. And I learned that some photos are indeed better represented in color. If you're a staunch A1 from day one supporter of this channel, um, well, maybe not from day one, it was like just last year. but. You might remember the video where I went on a photo walk around the American Tobacco Campus in Durham. And while I was walking around, I saw this bit of flowing, I think it was lemongrass in a planter, and I loved the colors and the way the light was hitting it. I went to go and take a picture, but as I looked at it, I thought, hey, this is just gonna look like a garbled mess in black and white. For a brief second, I regretted not having some color film on me, but then the thought went through my head all right, so I see some neat colors, but let me think about how I could shoot this in an interesting way. And then I just passed on it. Perhaps it's because I was already on the way to somewhere else and I didn't feel like stopping really to figure it out. Perhaps I just didn't have the drive to make it work. Or perhaps I just recognized that there wasn't actually a picture worth taking to me in that moment at that time with the light the way that it was and with that subject. I chose not to take the picture. And uh, knowing when not to take a picture is a subject for another time, 
But I attribute not taking that picture and not wasting a shot on that picture. I, I, I attribute that entirely to the discernment that I've gained from shooting with black and white film. And that brings me to my last point for those of you who have stayed around this long. The artistic and technical lessons that black and white photography can teach you can be applied to your color photography as well. I don't know if I'd say that every photographer should start with black and white, but it's an avenue worth exploring regardless of where you are on your photographic journey. I didn't begin my film photography journey by shooting in black and white, but I don't think I considered myself a photographer until I just got used to shooting in black and white and I, I don't know there, there's something about it that I kind of can't explain but like maybe I just happened to be learning photography at a an impressionable time in my life maybe there's something about the way that black and white photography looks maybe it's the way it feels maybe it's the abstraction of it all black and white photography sometimes feels more real than real to me but it's also very obviously not real because it's not color and that kind of gets at the heart of photography for me photography itself is an abstraction from reality uh, just like every other art form everything is a representation of the thing it's not the thing itself no idea if this is related but um, my favorite piece of art is the treachery of images this is not a pipe. This is not a flower. That's all I've got for you today. Um, let me know in the comments if you prefer black and white or color photography. If you really want to get into it, let me know how you feel about the subject as an observer and as a creator. Like, do you prefer working with color but you like black and white images? You know, just and for as a for instance for me i prefer working with black and white but a lot of my favorite artists work almost exclusively with color so i don't know like share subscribe all that fun stuff i'll be on this side of the lens in the next video and until then see ya